as early as the autumn, mandatory public transport for why? Well, what we should really be saying is not autumn, but what we should be looking at is the case numbers and what the situation is. In other words, do we have a abnormal variant, highly infectious, highly disease causing, lots of hospital admissions and deaths, or you know what the situation is? And then you act preemptively. So it isn't a case of in the autumn, it's a case of whenever that situation calls for. Now, it cannot just be uh, one, one thing will sort the problem out. It has to be a multi-layered approach. We've been through this pandemic two years. It is not rocket science to able to say to you all, to say to everyone, is this. It's a multifaceted approach, which is immunization, ventilation, masks, stay out of circulation if you are unwell, uh, early intervention if you are infected with antivirals. So when you put all those measures in place, they work masks on their own whilst you ignore ventilation, whilst you in, in, ignore the fact that you've got infectious persons amongst you, it doesn't work very well. OK. Uh, Lucy Johnson. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take issue with that rather. The masks uh, on their own, in, on an individual basis, there is some laboratory studies that suggest they may reduce your risk of infection. But across the board, across the world, we've seen that mask mandates seem to have absolutely no effect. And the best quality studies, not the laboratory studies where a mask is put on someone's face and there's a airflow that, you know, predicts where the air is going onto another piece of, onto another mannequin or whatever it is. The best quality studies are randomised control studies and those from Denmark, from Bang Bangladesh, show that there's very little signal, if any, about the use of, of, of community-based mask wearing. And that could be for lots of reasons. You know, people don't wear them properly. Pieces of cloth around the face, which are put on and off and put them in your pocket, you know, they can actually cause infections. Not only that, but there are also harms to wearing masks in society. What kind of society do we want like to what? live in if, if we, like you know, want to dehumanise people? Sorry, think, but, yeah, sorry. sorry Dr, Dr. Picani, did were you saying like, did, did we, I misheard, did you say like, like what? Harms. Yeah, so, you know, I think we need to engage and engage seriously. Uh, I'm not against uh, some of the things that Lucia said, which is this, wear your mask, wear it properly, wear a good quality mask. But to then sharp wave and say, well, the masks are causing harm, that's a little bit stretching it a little bit too far. That's your assertion. Let's just, let's just put, put that to the test, or at least to, to Lucy's judgment. I mean, I, I, I don't think, Lucy, you're suggesting clinical harms, are you? I mean, well, are you? Um, there is some, there's some evidence. There are some studies showing that people are at increased risk of infection because they get moist, they pick up other pathogens. But uh, psychologically, we have neurodiverse communities. We have deaf people. We have a society which we have lived perfectly well with respiratory disease for ad infinitum without masks, They're without good evidence that they work and with evidence that they are causing problems with people, you know, people who can't hear each other, people, children who are trying to learn to read and speak. Um, we, we actually don't really look at the harms and that's one of the things we haven't really done. We just bring in measures as a knee-jerk reaction to say, well, this looks like it will work, let's assume it will work. You know, the, the bottom line is mask mandates as opposed to individual mask wearing, you know, experiments have not worked. And that's the bottom line. You can say all you like, people must wear them properly and they must wear surgical masks, but they don't and they haven't. And, you know, we have teenagers, we have yes, people... And they haven't, and, and, and they haven't, because we have had a government that has been reluctant from the start of this pandemic to do it properly. They were late in implementing control measures, they were reluctant to implement proper control measures, and they continue to do so. Now, if you look at the WHO and other august bodies similarly, and you look at the Far East examples, mask, ma mask wearing has been successful and useful. Give you another example, masks worn properly in a clinical setting, in a London hospital nonetheless, right, showed that the, the healthcare workers 
did not get infected and very few infections occurred amongst healthcare workers when they wore their masks, when they wore the masks properly. The problem is in the United Kingdom, we have a polarized place now where we have, I'm going to wear my mask, I'm going to wear it properly. And then we have uh, people who say, I'm not going to wear it and I'm going to do all I can not to wear it in a public place, even when they may be infected and infectious to others. We have a problem. And that problem, the biggest elephant in the room is we had a reluctant government wanting to do the right thing at the right time. 